Reflections on Sikh Teachings During the COVID-19 Pandemic by Inderjit Singh, Lord Singh of Wimbledon. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a difficult and challenging time for all of us. It's depressing and frustrating not to be able to visit our different places of worship, to pray and socialise. But as a Sikh, I'm reminded of the need to be positive and live true to the spirit of Chardikala, optimism in all circumstances, even in the most difficult and challenging times. I believe we should take the lockdown as an opportunity to pause and reflect on the direction of our lives, both as individuals and as a community. Have we got our priorities right, or do we need to change direction? We go to our place of worship to recharge our spiritual batteries, but do we use the power gained to improve ourselves and help others, or do we simply let the spiritual charge drain away until our next visit to the Gurdwara or other place of worship? What do we need to do, both as individuals and as a community, to live and work for a fairer and more peaceful society? Guru Nanak, in his blueprint for a just society, reminded us that self-improvement was a necessary first step. To this end, he gave us three golden rules. He taught we should meditate on God, live by honest effort, and share what we can with the less fortunate. How can this guidance for positive living help us in the world of today? Meditation on Sikh teachings doesn't mean sitting cross-legged in abstract contemplation. It means reflecting on religious teachings to get a sense of direction in our daily lives. It means resetting our personal satnavs to a gurmukh or godly direction to help us distinguish the important from the trivial and the negative pulls on our time and energy that so easily distract us. Reflecting on spiritual teachings can help us become better, more effective human beings. Sikhs do not see religious contemplation as something divorced from the challenges of life. It means using religious guidance to meet those challenges more effectively. The second golden rule requires us to make our way through life by our own honest effort not by begging as was common amongst the holy people of old, nor by exploiting others, a major cause of injustice in the world of today. It is closely linked with the third rule or requirement to share what we can with others. Distribution of langar or free food is one aspect of this that has received prominence and media attention in the current pandemic, with favourable reporting from the BBC and others on Sikhs giving food to thousands isolated in the lockdown in this country and in many other parts of the world. At this time of reflection, it's important to look at the sharing in modern terms, in its modern perspective. Sikhism teaches there are two dimensions in life, the spiritual and the material. Both are necessary for balanced living. What Sikhism does criticise is blind obsession with material wealth and the current belief in both the West and the East that happiness and contentment can be purchased through the accumulation of wealth and material goods. Statisticians talk about physical attributes like height and weight falling in what we call a normal distribution a bell-shaped curve with the very tall or very heavy at one end and the very short or very light at the other, with most of us spread around the middle. Sikhism sees spiritual or ethical behaviour spread out in a similar way. At one end there are what we call the manmuks, selfish, greedy people who only think about themselves and what they can get out of life. Most of us are spread around the middle of the curve and go through life without either doing much harm or good. Then at the far end of the curve or spectrum we have the gurmuks or godly people, those caring little about themselves and always ready to help others. 
Sikhism teaches that our aim in life should be move should be to move ourselves and nudge society in general towards the positive end of the curve. In my work in the Lords, I've come across some genuinely good people, good mugs, and after the lockdown, I must do more to work with them. Sadly, in my view, foreign policy of most countries is rooted at the man muk end of the curve, with narrow national greed that ignores the rights of others in our small interdependent world. I like to consider myself something of a do-it-yourself expert. If asked to assemble a cupboard, I arrogantly throw the instructions to one side, I don't need those, and start putting the pieces together. Then I stand back to admire my handiwork, only to see that it's all skewed and ready to fall apart. It's then and only then that I look at the instructions. My Covid reflections make it clear to me that our all too clever society has arrogantly discarded the ethical teachings of religion in the pursuit of material greed and has created a dangerous, unstable world of gross inequalities of wealth and opportunity and a continuing denial of basic human rights in much of the world. In our neglect of the ethical dimension of life, we see the almost irreparable damage done to our environment. We've created a society in which domestic abuse occurs every 30 seconds of every day, with drug use and an ever-rising prison population, and poverty and homeless in areas of plenty. The Black Lives Matter protest reminds us how badly we've treated our fellow human beings in the past and still continue to do so today. Having made a mess of our do-it-yourself attempts at social and political improvement, I feel it's important that we now look again at religious imperatives for guidance on what we need to do as individuals and collectively for a sane and responsible living. For Sikhs, this means looking more closely at the teachings of our religious founders, for invaluable guidance on sane, balanced living, and a fairer and more peaceful post-Covid world.